Uh, number six. Trusting old photographs for historical evidence uh, yes. is always a good idea. We should have Mac in here for this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> I love uh, kind of taking taking all context out of it and putting today, you know, t people today back into, you know, old times and thinking about things through different lenses and not just saying, um, you know, it's always been done that way because here's a picture of a thing that mm -hmm. was from, you know, 1906. Therefore, look, here's my historical evidence. The uh, There's a lot of people who are taking photographs today that would not, you know, I would not want to emulate or I would not consider traditional or I would not consider something that is typically done, you know, using my, my best Britishisms. Um, but there's photographic evidence of it now. Um, mm -hmm. In the same way, there's, you know, Back then, there would be potentially photographic evidence of somebody doing something that wouldn't be right, air quotes, um, that, yeah, but people can still point to it saying, look, it was done. You know, a lot of the, the stuff, like, back then would just be, like, a, a photography studio. Like, if you're if you're walking, you know, in the mall or boardwalk or wherever, some tourist trap town, and you see the uh, the old-timey portraits mm -hmm. where they have, you know, the, the, you know, here's the Wild West thing, here's this thing, here's that thing that you can get dressed in um, and get your photograph done. Mm -hmm. Kind of think of it as that. A lot of the, you know, the portrait studios, it was an event. And sure. people would just get dressed up in the kit that was there. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and... A Part of that too, though, I hear you because you wouldn't want to emulate, you know, some goofball wearing a kilt wildly wrong today. But you also wouldn't photograph. Photography was so much harder to do then. Like you weren't going to waste your time just snapping forty-seven pictures in a minute, you know. So you're gonna you're gonna pick your your subjects carefully. Yeah. So well, I agree with the overall point that not every picture indicates exactly what everybody was doing at the time. It probably is a little bit more reliable than photos from today would be for the future. I think it's. Still shouldn't do a case study. Yeah. I, I, well, yeah, I think basically it comes down to um, people who want to make that argument are usually going for something that they really, really, really wanted to do anyway. Yeah. And so as soon as they come on any kind of a pictorial evidence, uh, you know, a photograph or a painting or something, or even a theatrical costume or something in a movie, they're going to say, see, 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 here, here, here. <laughs> I, I, I can prove it. They That's actually true. did this. See, they did it in Brigadoon. Yeah. Therefore, I'm going to wear this peacock feather. You know. Yeah. Um, Get your confirmation bias. Thank you. Exactly. But so the the yeah, but yeah, I think the answer is that photographs are really great for inspiration, and they're mm -hmm. really great for getting a sense of how things were done in the past. If you look at several of them, yeah, and then take the average, take the aggregate, because there were people who were like. You know, fashionistas and rebels and individualistic back then, just like there are now. Yeah. And and the styles that have survived were in some ways the most accessible ones, or the easiest ones, or the most popular ones. I think easiest is a big part of it. Or the most photographed ones. <laughs> Possibly the most photographed ones. Yeah. But you know, it's but 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 you're right. Yeah. I mean, you could go into if you were a person of the middle class and you wanted to have a photo taken, you you could go into a studio. Um, and and choose from different props. In general, you would do that. And then, but but with the Highland stuff, yeah, it's like, well, I'm Scottish, and here I'm visiting here visiting Edinburgh. I want to wear a kilt. Okay, well, we have these. Go ahead and put one of those on. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Conversely, you still do have people who it really is their official Highland wear, and they really are, you know, an official in their clan or even a laird or something like that. And so they're wearing the right kit. The problem is it takes a bit of a, you know, discerning eye. Or at least in practice, to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, know, you have to really look at the subtleties. You know, like, okay, are those pleats really where they're supposed to be? Or is like, wait, does that sword look real? I mean, hmm. does the background you know. look like the actual Highlands, or does it look like a curtain that was put? It's up always going. No, it's always yeah. going to look like a curtain. They didn't. <laughs> yeah. They didn't do out, outdoor <clears throat> photography yeah. for portraiture. Just you did controlled environment. You yeah. yeah, you had to have a controlled environment, especially pre. Um, you wouldn't know what it looked like. Pre-reliable you... electric lighting. Yeah. So, you know, most photo studios, even up until the late 19th century, would have huge skylights to make sure you could use natural light as much as possible. Um, but the details in the outfit are part of it. You know, and, and so, yeah. But I think there were some guys back then who did something just because they thought it would be fun. Mm -hmm. It would be a lark or they just liked the, liked the look mm -hmm. of it. But it wasn't a look that everybody could pull off, so it didn't survive. 
I've got a business proposition for you, Rocky. Oh, Jesus. And, and we'll put Eric in charge of this one. He can man the booth. We set up a, <laughs> a booth, booth over at the King of Prussia Mall. A booth now. Yeah, over at the King of Prussia Mall. We'll bring send you over with various sizes of kilts, uh-huh. feather bonnets, piper's plates, military doublets. Uh, okay. okay. The whole kit and caboodle. Okay. Whole kilt okay. and caboodle. Maybe that's the name of the booth. The kilt and caboodle. Kilt and caboodle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is getting and worse. People can that get sounds their picture like a taken. But... They get their picture taken all Scottished up. Yeah, yeah. And then, take some uh, swords yeah. and, you know. And then once they realize sure. how good they look, you know, you slip them a business card and maybe maybe there six months go. later they, they come yeah. around and buy a kilt. We'll make, we'll make tens <laughs> of dollars this. a day. <laughs> oh, I don't know. We'll probably lose tens of dollars <laughs> a day. Because remember what it costs to rent a storefront <laughs> to the King of Russia Mall? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, my god. I get that for pennies now. <laughs> and, you know, at the same time, part of me wants to do this. <laughs> it's a social experiment. It, yeah. yeah, this could be like a flash mob social experiment, you know, like kind of like a Mexican reality yeah. TV show thing, you know, <laughs> where you basically, you know, big practical <laughs> joke thing is like, you know, come dress like a Highlander for a day. And they have to wear a troubadour mask. That's fine. Right, exactly. Yeah. Don't troubadour? Be a luchador. Luchador, excuse me. Luchador, excuse me. A troubadour wow. mask. <laughs> One of those Tudor masks. <laughs> <laughs> Bring. I thought we sing you a song yeah. about Highland dress. Um, Don't be a star. Kilts and caboodle. <laughs> Kilts and caboodle um. sounds like it sounds like a like kebabs and haggis. I don't know. It's like um, before before we move on. Do you have any what? examples huh? Of, huh? of 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 things people get wrong with kilts because of pictures they've seen? Ooh. Um, where, where where is this myth affecting us? I okay. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cream hose for okay. Highland for you know the higher industry in Scotland. You're gonna and go then, into your your cream hose hatred. No, 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 no. But I'm showing you how it evolved <laughs> and like how it's affected the overall culture. Was you know pipe bands and and uh, the, the rental industry, the higher industry in Scotland started wearing cream hose because it was easy and da da da. Um, so everyone started getting married and renting their outfits and wearing cream hose. Therefore, people started thinking, oh. Cream hose are formal. I have to wear a cream hose for formal. Mm. And, you know, if okay. you were dressing in kilts in the 1970s or early 80s or you had your kit, you'd be like, oh, my God, no, what are you doing? You don't wear cream hose at all. They're horrible. But mm. it just kind of became a thing yeah. through evolution, and it's stuck-ish. Mm-hmm. There's been, I'd say, a good amount of pushback on them in general. Um, but it's one of those examples of... You know, again, the tail wagging the dog, the Highland industry saying, here you go. And now all those photos exist of, mm-hmm. hey, look at me when I got married. You're wearing cream hose. Yep, that's formal because mm-hmm. you just it's something to say so you don't feel embarrassed or whatever. Or that's what the place said when I went and got married. So yeah. that's what I wore. Mm. And the real answer is just cream goes with everything. So you yep. never want somebody to not match. You so see, you just it, give them all cream. It's traditional now because through want and usage. Oh, look at you. It has become a thing. Just throwing your words back at you. Okay. <laughs> but is it traditional? It is now. I don't see. I don't what know. What constitutes tradition, really, Rocky? I mean, God. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I want to continue on down a rabbit hole of myth busting. No, no, no. But the uh, I I would I would argue that it may be. What is tradition? How long must something be worn, and what percentage of the kilt wearing populace shall we say mm-hmm. must wear it for mm-hmm. it to become a tradition mm-hmm. um i think the cream hose thing i'll, I'll say luckily in my my mind because i'm not a big of a fan um but it's kind of gone away i don't think we're selling as many cream hose as we were in 2004 as a percentage um but it's it's still there people still wear yeah. them so but if you're traditional leaning in your kilt wearing you would there are better options than cream Fair. Is that a fair point? And I would say this compared to some other things you could see isn't what, like the color of your hose isn't critical to the kilt wearing experience either. So it's a, it's a tradition easily lost, even if it is a tradition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody's nobody's going to die on the hill of the correct color of hose to wear in a particular circumstance. Oh, I know. Uh, that's, that, that might <laughs> be, that might be stating things. it too strongly. There's some but... guys out there. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, not done, sir. <laughs> How dare you. How dare you. People would sooner lose that than the idea that I have to wear my clan tartan. That is certainly a much more embedded tradition mm-hmm. to the ex- overall experience. And... Psst! Did you know this video is actually just a little clip from a bigger podcast that we did called Haggis Hunting? We have the full video over here. But if you'd rather just listen to it, not have to look at this ugly mug, go to your favorite podcatcher and search for USA Kilts for all of our content.